Hi, everybody. How are you doing this morning? Good? Yeah? Very nice. Um, I will, in a little bit, unmute most of you, all of you, actually, uh, when I start sharing my screen and showing you uh, today's PowerPoint. I realized that one of the paintings in that PowerPoint was the wrong one. So I'm going to send you a new PowerPoint today along with uh, tomorrow's um, uh, lesson. So you will all know it. I have started receiving paintings of some of you and I have started compiling them in my PowerPoint 12 presentation. That would be our... Um, you know, uh, um, uh, that would be our showcase for the public. So I would encourage you to send me your paintings as and when they are ready. So what I wanted to talk to you before uh, we do anything is that um, I want you to take good photographs. The way to take good photographs is you take it in indirect light. Like when there is a cloudy day, it's a perfect day to take a photograph. Or you can take it inside your home, but where there's no direct sun. And then lay the paper on the floor and just go right above it and click a picture. And then when you click the picture, you are going to um, be able to edit it on the phone. So edit it so that the borders are clean, okay? Before you email it to me or text it to me, you can even text it to me with your name. And then sign your painting. Make sure you sign it. Let me just show you. <coughs> so today, um, so if you have a painting like this, right? Here's your painting. Don't sign it like right here. Because sometimes what will happen is you when you try to edit it, that mm -hmm. might go away, mm -hmm. okay? So instead, sign it a little bit above. Or sometimes people sign it inside the painting. I like to do that. I like to uh, camouflage my sign. And some artists used to sign it, but not by their name, but the way they made their fingers or something, you know? They would make them very skinny and uh, or they would make a, a very characteristic way and they would sign it like that, okay? But put your name down, put your name down just a little bit above, like over here, just over here, so that it doesn't cut off when you, take, when you edit your painting, okay? That's an important thing. But definitely sign your painting because that, that shows you're proud of your painting. Today we're going to learn how to sketch so I want you to bring out these black graphite pencils, okay? That's it. And now I'm gonna start, I'm going to unmute all of you and I'm gonna share my screen, okay? Okay, hot start. Let me open. Hey, uh, Rohit, can you come here for a second? How do I open my PowerPoint presentation, which I, I should have, is my PowerPoint. It was, so I have to, uh, yeah, but where's my, I'm going to share my screen, but where's my exit full screen open? PowerPoint, right? Document PowerPoint two. Okay. So, go ahead. Screen. Uh, okay. This is my. Yeah. Share. Okay. Can you see my PowerPoint now, everybody? Yeah. You can see my PowerPoint. Good. I'm going yeah. to mute, mute, you, mute you guys again, okay? So, okay. So today we're going to learn. I'm really excited about, about Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci was a phenomenal guy. 
not only was he a painter, he was a scientist, he was an architect, he was a polymath, he was an engineer. But you know what? He was also interested in anatomy, botany, zoology, geology. So he did a, he contributed a lot. Somebody is, uh, uh, Madison, can you mute yourself, darling? Mute yourself, yeah, thank you. So, um, so he was a polymath. Polymath is a person who knows a lot about a lot of things, okay? So he was not just an engineer, uh, not just a painter, but he was all of these things. And he spent a lot of time, he was born in 1452, okay? And he died at the age of 67 and 1519, okay? Spent a lot of time in Milan, Rome, Bologna, Venice, and France. Leonardo did not go to school. He did not have any particular formal training like you guys go to school, right? Right now you're at home because of the pandemic. But imagine that, he never went to school, but he knew all of these wonderful things. And he was considered the real Renaissance man or the universal genius, okay? He conceptualized flying machines, armored vehicles, he even thought about concentrating solar power. And he also thought about the calculator. And that was like way back in the 1400s. And he, um, uh, he actually devised the bobbin winder. You know what a bobbin winder is? It is like when people are sewing in the machine, you rebind the thread and there's an automatic, automatic bobbin winder. So that was his contribution. Okay, now who did he learn how to sculpt and uh, how to paint? He was he was a student of Andrea Verrocchio. Now Verrocchio was a good painter. Okay, so one some of his famous paintings. So these are uh, Virgin and Child was a painting by Andrea Verrocchio. Okay, he also made a famous sculpture called David and, and uh, Bargello, and they're all in Florence, Italy. He made the statue of Bartolomeo, that's in Venice, Italy, okay? So Leonardo trained under Verrocchio for about seven years. He started training with him at the age of 14. Some of you might be 14. And so you are now taking this uh, course and you're learning about these great artists. So it's sort of like, you know, he started learning <coughs> And then he was 14, but by the age of 17, he became an apprentice. Uh, so there, when you become an apprentice, you're actually contributing uh, to the uh, to Verrocchio's paintings. So Verrocchio was his teacher, but he was painting on his paintings and he contributed to those paintings. So by the time he was 20 years old, he had his own studio. Some people take a lot of time to get their own studio, but he was 20, barely uh, just finished being a teenager and he was already an established artist, okay? Now, some of his famous paintings. How many of you have heard about the Mona Lisa? I'm going to unmute you all. So have you heard of that, about the Mona Lisa? Yes? Yeah. 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 Yes. Very nice. Okay, yes. so Mona Lisa, was done by him. So I'm going to mute you again. Yes. Okay. So uh, Mona Lisa is one of the most expensive paintings in the world. Just to insure it, like to get insurance, it's over six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It's probably more than that now. So Mona Lisa. So Leonardo da Vinci did a lot of work but only 15 of his paintings survive to this day, okay? So Mona Lisa is surprisingly well-preserved and I had the opportunity to see it. It's at the Louvre in pa Paris, okay? And um, believe it or not, it was stolen by a gentleman by the name of Perugia. He was from it Italy. Remember, Leonardo da Vinci was born in Italy, but then he lived in France. And so Mona Lisa is now in France at the Louvre. And uh, Perugia used to work over there. 
and he decided that no this painting belongs in italy so i'm going to steal it and so he stole it and he kept it in his apartment for two years can you imagine that and how did he steal it it's the stuff of movies so he what he did was he um uh, hid in a uh, you know a cabinet where they keep brooms and things and the next day when the museum opened he just walked out with the painting under his coat and it was lost for two years but then eventually he got impatient and then he started he tried to sell it back to one of the museum's owners and of course he was caught and he spent like six months in prison but then um that's how that that was a nice little story about mona lisa and if you look at this painting like you know i am going to go through these paintings really quickly for you but a lot of art historians and scholars they spend hours studying the painting and looking at it and thinking okay what is what is there there's a lot to study in the painting but today i just want you to look at this painting and to see that you know it's a very soft painting so the technique that they're using is called sfumato sfumato is where you you're not outlining anything so colors will just blend into so look at this this area right here the colors are just blending in that's a sfumato technique so the next painting I'm going to show you is this one. It's called The Virgin of the Rocks. It's in the Louvre in Paris. It's originally, it was originally on a wooden panel, but then they transferred it into onto a canvas and it's uh, available uh, at the Louvre in Paris. And there's another copy of it at the National Gallery in London. Same thing, the, the painting is very soft. It, so it has used the sfumato technique. Okay. The next painting is called The Lady with an Ermine. Well, you know, it looks like a lamb, but it's really not a lamb. It's an ermine. You know what an ermine is? It's a weasel. You know how these little weasels stand on their little feet? Uh, so, but uh, this ermine is a little bit bigger than it normally is. So I think it wasn't real, this painting, but you know, um, so this was one of his very, very famous uh, paintings. And it is uh, in Poland right now at their National Museum in Krakow, okay? Let's look at this one. This painting is uh, called Salvatore Mundi. It's basically Jesus uh, and he's showing the sign of the cross. But you look over here, see right here? He's, he, he has a little orb, like orb is a, circular thing but it's transparent and behind this transparency you'll see that there is a um that was a signature of uh vinci okay and right now it's owned by muhammad bin salman who is from saudi arabia no abu dhabi in abu dhabi it was also uh what do you call it showcased at the louvre in abu dhabi so Salvatore Mundi, and it was painted in 1500, the year 1500, and it's still there. So you have to, uh, let's look at the next painting. This painting, this beautiful woman, her name is Ginerva de Benci. Ginerva is the name uh, and from Benci's, probably that's how. And it was painted in 1474, and it's at the National Gallery in Washington, D.C. So if uh, when everything opens up and you guys go to Washington DC, make sure you go and look at this painting. So you'll see a lot of the paintings over uh, the next 10 weeks. And I'll show you where all they are. You know, the way I've uh, showcased it is that like, you know, I, I told you the name of the painting, when it was created and where you can see it. So if you can go to DC and see this painting, make sure you go there and see it. This uh, woman had about 10 poems written about her. She was that beautiful. This is another painting of Vinci. Uh, it's called The Virgin and Child with Saint Anne, and it's in the Louvre Museum in Paris. Look at this gorgeous um, rendering. It's called, you know, you would think it's a sketch, but it's really not a sketch because he started his first layer. Remember yesterday in my email I sent you, I told you, when you do a painting, try to do it with layers. You do first layer, you need another layer.
layer and another layer, and then the painting really comes alive. So this is an unfinished painting of the head of a woman. It's be very beautiful, but it's uh, done in probably, um, you know, umber. It's an unfinished painting. It's like a brown paint. And uh, this was probably the first or second layer of a painting that he never finished. Okay, so that's the head of a woman. Here is another uh, sketch that he did. It's red chalk on paper, and it's of an old man, or it could be of Vinci himself when he was older. We don't know, but it's present in the uh, Royal Library in Italy. Okay, there's a next look at this painting this is actually almost a, a sketch it's like an ink wash there's see this brown paper it's like a wash you just do a little wash and this is done by ink and it's about it's it's uh, what he's showcasing here is the roman architect vitruvius all this writing is about something that vitruvius had written and he's showing that this man can either fit in a circle so see the circle or a square. A lot of scientific journals use the Vitruvian man in their journals, okay? And the original is in Venice, okay? And Leonardo da Vinci, he would blend math into art. So he thought that art was also uh, incorporated a lot of mathematics. And he always thought that the workings of a human body, like, you know, how everything works in the human body is so perfect, right? It's similar to the workings of the universe or the world we live in. You know how perfect the world is? Like in the sense that we have the spring, the summer, the fall, and it comes back year after year and it does its thing. So he thought and he said that man's body is exactly like that of the universe, okay? Let's look at this this painting, this painting is really, the original is not at all, like, you know, it was destroyed uh, because it was done on a wall of a church, okay? So because of humidity, the paint came off, people actually, you know, repainted it and so forth. It's still there in Milan in Santa Maria Grazi Church, but it's not the original painting. But this is one of the most um reproduced paintings ever uh, of the last supper okay most reproduced paintings okay so um, um i'm going to unmute all of you in case you have any questions do you have any questions for me so far okay. anyone no questions no, no questions Okay, let's uh, let's move on, and I'm going to mute you again. I'll, um, let's move on. So the next painting. This is a landscape of the Arno Valley in Uf and it is present in the Uffizi, which is a museum again in Italy. So, what do you think this is? It's a landscape, right? Apparently, this is the first ever landscape done. And look at if the look at this landscape. What he has done is he's taken one of these graphite, like these pencils right here, and he's drawn it out and he's shaded it. That's what we are going to do. So he's done some shadings in the landscape right here. And he's this is sort of like a line drawing, and it's um it's of the Arno Valley. Okay. The other painting, the next painting here, is the Annunciation. This is, uh, this is the Annunciation of Vinci. The painting that I sent you earlier was the wrong one, and I'll send you this one again today, okay? Um, and this is an oil on tempera on a panel of wood, I think. This is, again, Mother Mary with baby Jesus. It's called the Madonna of the Carnation. It's an oil on panel again. It was made in 1478. It's uh, uh, it, you can see it if you go to Germany. Okay. Then this painting again is an oil on canvas. 
It's done in 1478 and it's, uh, it's in uh, the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, which is in Russia. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question. Unmute everybody. So tell me, what is so characteristic about this painting? What do you see? Anybody? The baby. The baby, okay. And this is uh, the baby's mom. This is Mother Jesus, uh, Mother Mary with baby Jesus. But what do you see? What What is the characteristic of this painting? I mentioned Realism. it earlier. Realism, very good, very good. Very realistic painting, okay. What else do you see? Huh? Based it on reality. Based it on reality, yes. So it's very, uh, it's a realistic painting. And then I, I talked about a technique, it's called spumato, right? Spumato where there's no lines really. So what he has done is the painting is just disappearing. So he's, the color is just disappearing into the background. That's like a spumato technique. Here is another painting. This is present in the Vatican. What do you see here? Starting of a painting, I'm going to mute you all. Okay, so that I don't hear the background noise. Um, basically, this is an unfinished painting of uh, Leonardo da Vinci. Um, it is that of Saint Jerome in a Syrian desert. Okay, but what do you see here? It's not just a sketch, he started the painting. Remember I told you, when you do a painting, develop it in layers. So first you do a, a sketch, like you do a drawing, then you put, a, put some paint on it, and then you go on and add more layers of paint and so forth, and then the painting comes about. You know, it really comes out. So this is one of his unfinished paintings, probably one or two layers of paint has gone over it. But it, you can see how beautiful uh, the rendering, the sketches. He's already, you can see some, you know, the muscles of the neck is showing. You can see his expression is just gorgeous, you know. So uh, these are some of his paintings I wanted to share with you today. And um, the next thing I would love to tell you about the quotes from Leonardo da Vinci. And I'm going to do these quotes of different masters because I want you to learn from them, you know? So one of his famous quotes, and I'm, I'm just telling you here, I'm gonna read out. This is what Vinci said, study without desire spoils the memory and it retains nothing that, it, uh, that you take in, okay? So that means what? Now you're here uh, with me today at 10 a.m. Some of you are a little bit sleepy. But if you didn't have the desire to learn to paint, you wouldn't be here, right? So if you, if you don't want to learn anything, you'll never retain anything. Imagine, Vinci said this way back when, like almost in the 1500s or 1470s. So the painter, he says, this is one of his quotes, the painter has the universe in his mind and hands. And nothing strengthens authority so much as silence. The noblest, oh, I don't know what is happening to my PowerPoint. What the heck is happening here? Okay. The noblest pleasure is the joy of understanding. If you understand something, that's the best thing. Like when you get it, that the feeling that you get it, like when you do a math problem and you get it, don't you feel so good that, you, oh, you got it. That is the noblest pleasure is the joy of understanding is what he said. And he says, art is never finished. It's only abandoned. That's one of his quotes. And one of the things that happens in this world is that, you know, people say that you can only be an artist or you can only be a scientist or you can only be an engineer or only a doctor. That is not true. You can be anything. And Vinci said that. He said, knowledge of all things is possible. So if you want to learn about something, go ahead and learn it because knowledge of all things is possible. 
And learning never exhausts the mind. Like you can keep on learning. See, I'm 60 years old and I'm learning all these things with you, along with you. So I have to do my work to do these PowerPoints. So to do the PowerPoint, I have to learn. You know, it's not just enough. I mean, we've learned about it, but it's not just enough for me to, you know, come back, come here and give you this PowerPoint, but I have to literally learn about it. So I'm learning along uh, with you. And we have some older uh, aunties with us. They're learning with us, you know? So learning never exhausts the mind. So these are very precious thoughts to think about. And even though you're little, some of you are very little, just about eight years old. But I just want you to know that, you know, it is, um, it's, uh, Keep on learning and be happy about learning. All right? Now, let's draw. Let's draw. Bring out your sketchbook. Here I have my sketchbook. Okay? And remember, I'm going to show you how to, um, uh, how to sketch with a lead pencil. So these are graphite pencils or lead pencils. Okay? You can uh, start with this. Now, if you look at your pencils, look at them. And you will see that some of these are 4B, 6B, 2B, B, and H, right? So what, what does all these things mean, okay? H starts for hard pencils, okay? And they make light marks, very light marks. B stands for black okay they are softer uh pencils and they will so the h pencils will get used up so quickly but the b pencils will get used up very fast all right but they make darker marks on the paper all right uh so let's look at now uh let's let's take out your h pencil and draw something anything so I have given you some of these, like I'm going to come back to the slide, but here are some references. These are some YouTubes that you can go ahead and uh, open the YouTube sessions later on for your homework. Go and look at it. They are very good references of shading. Okay, We're going to learn, learn that. Then I gave you some photographs of mine, like different photographs. You can just go ahead and you can just go ahead and pick any one of these pictures so that all of us don't have the same thing. Or you can draw whatever it is you want, okay? So uh, take that and let's figure out how to shade. So I am going to put my sketchbook on the easel for you. Let's see, here's the easel. I'm going to put this away. I'm going to put this up. Can you see it? Let me turn this off. Okay, so I'm going to use a pencil and I'm going to draw something. So I'm going to make like a drawing. Okay, one. This is one of my favorite things I draw. All right, just anything. Let me show you, bring it closer. See, there's a flower or a daisy. It's very informal. Now you can, uh, uh, so shading, so now to shade this, let me show you over here. I'm going to shade it like this. So I just take my pencil and put it right at the edge and then just, do this. That's called hatching. Okay, can you see that? Just draw like lines. But if you draw closer together, it becomes shading. So that's hatching. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then cross hatching would be just cross it. That's cross hatching. Okay, see, it's coming up. 
And circleism, what's circleism? Circleism is nothing but making circles. So you just do little circles. Make circles like that. Just make circles. So see, can you see this? We're making little circles and that's bringing up the shading. That's the PowerPoint. Huh? That's circleism. And contouring. Contouring is nothing but going All right, let me see, let me stand up. Is just going with the contour of the, so going with the contour of this sketch. So that's contouring. So we're going with the contour. So like this, over here. That's contouring. Okay, again, I'm going to show you one more time. So this is hatching. See that? Hatching. Cross hatching would be cross hatching. Just you're going across the same thing. That's cross hatching. Circulism is just making little circles. And you're shading that. So little circles. And how do you make it light or dark? Let me ask you a question. I'm gonna unmute all of you. So how can you make this? Light or dark? Anybody? So if I put if I put more pressure, say for instance over here, I want to make it really dark over here. Okay? So I'm going to put more pressure. See? More pressure. Or I could use a pencil, say uh, 6B. Let's look at the 6B. Let's see what 6B does. So here's a 6B. And I'm going to do it right next to it. What do you see? It's a little bit more darker, right, than this one. So you can put the larger the number, the darker. Okay. Going to the eraser. Okay. Trying to not damage this. And and don't worry, uh, you know, uh, even if you make a mistake, don't worry about it because if you don't make a mistake, you make lots of mistakes. So go ahead and make a good mistake. That's a bad. Okay. There's a bunch of pictures. I chose this one. It's a good starting one. Yeah, I decided on that because it's simple, but it's also nice looking. Do you need a way to stand up your phone better? Um, this works. Well, here. I'll show you. Let's see if we can. All right, so um, very nice. So let's see, can you can you start sketching? Let's, let's, uh, um, I'm going to unmute one person at a time, okay? Abigail, I'm going to unmute you. Can you show me what you're going to sketch? I don't have a sketch right now. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, did you decide which, which, what do you want to uh, do a sketch of? No? Okay. Uh, all right. I'll mute you again. And um... okay. Uh, let's see. Abby. Is Abby here? 
Yes. Yes. All right. Did you decide on a sketch? Yeah, I'm going to sketch my um, pet bird. You're going to sketch what? My bird. Your bird. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, all right. Very, very nice. How about Gio? D Gio, do you have a... I'm probably just going to sketch the leaf up top. Oh, you're, you're good. Very good. How about Haley? Haley, can you hear me? Yeah. What are you going to sketch? Do you have anything to show me? Yeah. Show I have me. my um a picture for my phone. Oh, that's lovely. Lovely. It's very nice. How about you, Jareth? You want to show me anything? Let's see if I can unmute Jared. Yep, I can unmute you. I chose to sketch one of the leaf ones on here. Okay, very nice. So has anyone started a sketch? Because mm -hmm. I want to see, oh, that's very yeah. nice. That's simple, very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I started a sketch, sort of. You have very good. So, uh, has anybody, uh, let me unmute everybody. Let me see. Has anyone started a sketch? Well, sometimes I right. You got to focus on your sketch. I started on mine. Yeah, I started on mine. Oh, yeah? Show it to us. I made a leaf. I don't have one. This is what I've gotten so far. Let's see. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, good. So let me uh, let me give you an example. I'm going to mute you all. I'm going to give you a very simple example. Okay. So I'm going to draw a very simple thing. So you know why I, I gave you an apple, right? I sh uh, there's a picture of an apple. Generally, and I would think leaf to start. Right. Everybody thinks that the apple is like what? Now, just going to use cross right? But in real life, because for me that's easiest. But in real life, an apple is, if you look at an apple, see, when you become an artist, why do you want to become an artist? Why should you learn art? Okay. The reason why you want to learn art is that you're going to be a very keen observer, right? You're going to observe a lot of things in a very keen fashion. So in the sense that when you become, say, a teacher or a doctor or an engineer or a nurse or, say, you're a plumber or uh, a sculptor, you're going to use these skills of an artist because you're now, see, when you're looking at an apple, next time you look at an apple, you'll see, okay, the apple is really not round. It has a different shape. All apples are differently shaped. Oranges are differently shaped. When you go out in the, in the open and you look at the sky and you look at the clouds, you realize, oh, the clouds are really not that white. It has some gray underneath it. And when the sun is setting, it takes the colors of the sun. And so you're going to be a very acute observer. And that's what I want you to take from these classes. Like, you know, uh, I don't think uh, all of you are going to become painters just because you take this one class. No, but you're going to become an observer, a keen observer of things, right? You're going to learn to, so for instance, say you become a teacher someday and uh, you have 20 students in your class. And then because of your observation skills, you're going to notice that a few students or one student is not really paying attention or he's lost or something. So you're not going to pick on that student. You're going to uh, talk to that student separately in a different time and say, what's bothering you? Are you learning in class? And you'll develop a conversation with that student. And then you're going to become a better teacher because you have this 
keen observation skills. When you become a doctor, say for instance, you know, uh, and a patient comes to you and they say, oh, I have this headache, but then, and, uh, or you, uh, you have, I have a, um, a fever, but then you see a rash all over the body. And uh, you know, then you know that, okay, because of your keen observation, you can figure out what kind of disease that person has, even though he hasn't told you everything about all his symptoms, right? So if you're a police officer, say for instance, you know, you go to a, a, a scene of like an accident or something, and then you can figure out who is at fault. You know, people can say whatever, but because of your keen observation skills, you're going to be able to figure out who was at fault in that accident. You understand? So that's why you, uh, we are going through this class. We're going through the paintings and we are learning about artists. And I know you're very little and a lot of people with a lot of like education spend hours looking at one painting. And we're going through so many paintings in such a short time, like in 30 minutes, but you're going to take something from this and you'll remember these things. I know that for a fact because my children, when they were little, they would complain about learning, but they remembered some things. That's what I want to want you guys to go with, okay? So uh, does anyone want to show me any progress? I'm going to unmute all of you. Oh, I see Jareth and her leaf. Bring it closer to the video. Wow. The other way, the other way, Jareth. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Good job. And uh, let's see, Joe. I mainly use the cross hatching. Yeah, I see that. My brother actually taught me that one before i even came to this class okay very nice very nice very nice let's see oh there's abby has a bird abby i love your bird beautiful and savannah savannah has oh it's a flower and leaves beautiful very very nice how nice is that who else wants to show me if i don't if I don't say your name, please. Oh, Madison. Madison, what is that? A whale. A what? A whale. A whale? A wave. A wave. Show us, show us again. Show us again. That's gorgeous. Oh, that's beautiful. Very, very nice. Who else has it? Let's see. Thank you all for sharing. Oh. Kusum, oh Kusum, very nice, very nice. I like it, I like it a lot. Thank you. Very nice, very nice. And Saroj has something too. Let's see, oh, very nice, very nice. And I have, oh, there's auntie over here. She has a very nice little flowers, very nice. Show it, show it us again, uh, bring it closer. There you go, beautiful flowers flowers it has character and will you're showing me something show show it go ahead okay let me unmute you hold on will unmute all okay go ahead will show us show us what you have go ahead very nice what is it you're trying to make will talk to us I can't hear you, Will. That's all right. That's all right. Very nice, everybody. Very, very interesting. So, um, I see Madison is busy at work. Let's see what, uh, yeah, the, the wave is coming together really well, Madison. Very nice. Jared, show me what, what else you've done. 
So today, when you go back at um, at home, I'm going to mute you all just because of the background noise. So pick up something, and like when you're when you're uh, doing the sketching, I would like for you to make a painting, okay, of the sketch, and put it. Use all different types of uh, sketching, uh, shading, okay? Use the hatching technique on one. Use the cross hatching on another. Use circleism on one, a different one. And use contouring on a different one. So give me four examples, if you can. And then use all of them in the same thing. Try to do that. And then if you have time, today after the class make sure you go and look at those videos because you'll see some, some really beautiful things being done okay now i'm working okay can you hear me i'm un I i've unmuted everybody i fixed it you yeah. fixed it do a test is that will talking no. All right, do you have any questions today? So we remember, I wanted to uh, show you this uh, painting of Leonardo da Vinci. There we go. Okay, this is a Leonardo da Vinci painting. It's a landscape, and he has used a lot of shading techniques here. Okay? So you uh, just look at it and see if you can find hatching, cross hatching, whether he used circleism in it or not. Okay. I'm going to unmute you all. All right. Let me know if you have any questions. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah? No questions? So pick anything. There's a little chili pepper from my garden. There's a tomato. Look at the tomato and look at the shape. It's a, this is a very fine example of where you can um, do contouring shading. An apple, again, it's not a round. It's not round. It has a shape. Look at it. Yeah. So you see all these little paintings in the background? Most of my PowerPoints, rather all of my PowerPoints right here. See this painting? This painting is mine. And see it and learn about it on that link right there. All right, we have about 10 more minutes, but if you have, if you don't have any questions, call me, you're free to leave. But if you have any questions, stay on and ask questions, okay? Thank you for coming and joining us. I really enjoy having you all. Thank you, Aizan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well. We are learning something about the printers. Yes, yes. I, enjoy. I think yeah. you will enjoy learning about the painters a lot. Yes. And little stories, if I can, uh, if I can tell you these little stories. Stories about them. Yeah. Very nice. So, and I learned to make a pot. You, yes. <laughs> nice, very nice. That's so, really, really nice. Dolly, you. you didn't show me anything. Did you do any painting just now? Huh? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm talking to Dolly. My sketch? Yeah, let's see your sketch. I made so many things. <laughs> made a lot of things, Saroji as Nakuso. Yeah, yeah, I made, I made one only because one. I was hearing. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> I like yours. What, you, I what said, is it? I said, yes. I want uh, all uh, sketches, photo because I forget all this. I uh, how to do. Only okay. I want photo so I can do uh, to see that. Okay. Okay. All type, all type of sketches. Right, right, right. I will, I will give you, um, so just, in, the, in yeah. the next email for the right. next PowerPoint, I will do some sketches 
Yeah. And I will send it into the next uh, part. Sure. Huh? Okay? Yeah. Because I for I know I can do the uh, cross uh, sketch and yeah, but yeah, all five I for and round one I also uh, remember but yeah. after that I yeah no problem no problem I will I will send you examples of it yeah okay Thank you. very nice and Dolly good job I'm very proud of you for coming in on time today make sure you come did you learn anything Dolly yeah. When will we do painting, like on a canvas? On the canvas? Well, there, we have about 10 weeks. So this is yesterday you missed a painting. So what we did was um, we used color pencils and then we used water to activate the color of the color, uh, watercolor pencils. So, so there is a- Oil paint, like a thing that doesn't move? No, so here, there's a box of color pencils, okay? Watercolor pencils. Just the color pencils are not going to make you uh, uh, make a painting. But the watercolor pencils, these that come in this box, use this and make the pot. If you look at your first PowerPoint, there's a pot with flowers. So everybody has made that pot with flowers. And that's why, and, and that was their first painting. So I want you to do that pot with the flowers. Send me that painting, okay? You, you can text it to me or email it to me so that I can put it on my um, PowerPoint 12, which will become your ex uh, the exhibition. Does that make sense? Okay, so that was your first painting. Today, uh, sketching was taught, so, uh, you know, it'll slowly progress, uh, you know, as we go. And yes, we will paint on the canvas uh, later on. We will, in time. Mm -hmm. Anybody else has a question? No. No? No. Yeah. Huh. So you have Namaste. some friends. Namaskar ji, namaskar. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. Kaise hai aap? Yeah. कोई <laughs> इतने आर्ट म्यूजियम देखने गई हूँ लेकिन इतनी चीजें पता नहीं थी उस वक्त तो अब याद आ रही हैं हाँ नहीं ये बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है बहुत हाँ I went to Paris all that yes ये अच्छी पेंटिंग एकदम शार्प और एकदम बहुत अच्छी है और हाइसन यू यू रियली एक्सप्लेन वेल या I do thank you I appreciate it yes या तो at least I would learn a lot from you. She is very Aww. clever and very really loving, lovely, our daughter. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad um, Sunita asked me to get into your class. Oh, good! I'm so happy. Yeah, because you know, for me also, like I never realized that um, I used to volunteer when my kids were little, and we taught masterworks. And I, I used to think, oh my God. Like uh, these little children, how can they learn about uh, masters, uh, you know, masterworks of these amazing artists? But I volunteered and I realized that, you know, first and second grade, they were taught about these paintings. Yeah. They do retain some of it. So, um, so that's my for art start. I kind of followed the same program, just modified it a bit and, uh, you know, and then incorporated art lessons in it. And hopefully that'll that'll make them understand that you know um, art is a, is a very important thing in life, really. And if, mine, mine is not good, but I'm going to send it to you. Yeah, please send it to me. Just text it to me, and I will put it up. Yeah, actually, I don't know how to do it, but I tried. So I'm going to send it to you. Yeah, do that. Yeah, it's very nice. Very nice. So, I don't. Yeah, no, it's very nice. For a first time, uh, you're doing this. It's very good. 
Yes, Dolly, you have something to say? Yeah, another painting that I've been working on is like this flower pot. Take it. Take a picture and send it on your email, Hyacinth. Okay. Oh, that's a lovely flower pot. It's beautiful. Beautiful, Dolly. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, make sure you name the painting and sign it when you think it's done and send it to me. Okay? Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, everybody. It's um, it's wonderful to have you all. And thank you. I, uh, thank you. Pleasure. Tomorrow is another day, so I will come up with uh, come up with another lesson. Okay. Sure. Take thank care. you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Hassan. Thank you. Bye. 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 So should I leave? Yes, you can leave. Thank you. Focusing wrong.